All right, so just going to go over um, three questions, like I said, eight, nine, and 10. Um, before we get to 10, I'm going to come back to this question eight and kind of redo this one uh, and talk about how we can use the same strategy to solve for question number 10. But one of the things when you're doing this is first, you just need to make sure you're reading the question. And if a $120 watch is discounted by 25%, what is the sale price? So you have to know what this discounted means. And you have to know if that's increasing our costs or if it's decreasing the cost. And that's really important. Um, and when something is discounted, it's being decreased. So when we do this, we have our starting amount. So it's 120. And since we know it's being discounted, we're going to subtract and we're subtracting whatever percentage that we are discounting it by. So 25%, we know it is equal to 0 0.25. Um, so I'm going to rewrite that as 0 0.25. And then it's times the original amount, 20%, because whatever, or 120, because whatever 25% of it is, that's what we're adding or subtracting. And since it's being discounted, we're subtracting it. So then this is going to turn to 120 minus 30. And 120 minus 30 is 90. All right. So um, that is one way that we can do this, is we can figure out individually or separately what 25% is of that watch. So 120, and that's $30. And since it's being discounted, we're subtracting it. So that means we're going to pay $90. So it's one way we can do it. And the other way we can do it as well uh, that you guys point out in class is if I'm making a, um, if I'm getting a discount of 25%, well, then that means I'm paying the remainder portion of that. So I'm going to be paying 75% of whatever that total is. So you can also, if you guys can identify that, so you have the 120. And since we know that we're paying 75% of it, because the total cost is 100% and we're doing a 25% discount, we can also just do 120 times 0 0.75, which is 90. So as we talked about in class, either one of these are fine, where you can find the percentage of the whole number and then add it or subtract it, or you can add or subtract the percentage and then multiply by what's left over. All right, so now we're going to move on to question number nine. Uh, so for question number nine, um, it says here, and I'm going to do it both ways again, uh, but initial price is $80. We have a sales tax that's 10% that's being applied and sales tax, then, is that increasing or decreasing? It's increasing. So it's going to be plus 10%, I know, can be written as 0 0.10. So it's going to be plus 0.1 times the original amount that we have. And that's going to tell us what our total amount is. So it's 80 plus and 10% of 80 is 8. So it means that we're paying $88 uh, after the sales tax is applied. And one of the things we can think of is we are paying 10% more. So normally we start out at 100% and we're increasing this by 10%. We're paying 10% more than what our bill is because that's what our tax is. So we are paying 110%. And we can then convert this to a decimal of 1.1. And if we did 80 times 1.1, we would get 88 as well. So once again, so once again, you can either find the percent increase or decrease on its own and then add it to the original amount, or you can just go ahead and calculate what the percentage change is and multiply your original amount with that, it's going to give us the same effect regardless. All right. So now before we move back and do number 10, I'm going to go back to um, the question eight. So I'm going to write it next to it. We're going to answer that one again first, work our way back and then show how we can apply it to 10. All right. So when we did question number eight, um, we did that here. Uh, we had our original amount was 120. Since it's being discounted, we subtracted it by 25% of that 120. And then that gave us 120 minus 30, which then gave us our final amount of 90. So we can then say then that this was equal to our final amount of $90. So in this question number 10, it says after applying the discount, the final price is this. What is the original uh, price? So in this case, this 120 is what represented the original price. So if we didn't know what that was, we could have rewrote this equation or expression into X because we don't know what the original amount is minus 0 0.25 of the original amount, which is 120 on this problem, but X, if we don't know it, and then we knew that that was equal to 90. And some of the things we talked about 
in class. Well, when we have one X there, just an X there, it's understood to be one. And when we're combining our like terms, we add or subtract the numbers in front of it. So it's one minus 0 0.25, which is in 0 0.75 X. So this simplifies to give me 0 0.75 X. And that's equal to 90. And then now you guys learn in grade six, solving basic equations. Well, if two numbers multiply, I can solve it by division. So I can divide each side by 0 0.75. And that would then give me that X is equal to 120. So if you guys are able to solve the other one, the first question, which is a little bit easier, it's just kind of using the same thought process, but kind of in reverse. So let's go ahead and I'm going to show you two different ways that we can solve this. So we don't know the original price. So we're going to represent that by X. And we applied a discount that was 25%. So I know it's subtracting 0.25 of that X because X is the original amount. So whatever 25% of that was, we're subtracting it. And then it gave me 300 as my final answer. We know that in front of this X, it's understood to be a one. So one minus 0 0.25 is going to give me 0 0.75 X. And if that's multiplied and it's giving me 300, I can then divide each side by 0 0.75. And that means that X is equal to 400. So that was what the original amount was. And then we can check it out. We can do 400 times 0.25, which is then equal to 100. And 400 minus 100 is 300. So then we know, yes, we did this right. After I applied a 25% discount, it is in fact 300. So that's one way that you can do it. The other way that we also talked about in class is to try and be consistent. We can create what's called a proportion. And we're going to learn this next one in more detail. So if you get confused in this video, just use this method for now. But in the future, we're going to be using this next one to solve a few different types of questions. So I'm going to write cost and I'm going to write percentage. And then underneath of that, I'm going to create fractions that are equal to each other. So now we know that percentages are out of 100. So this is our total amount. Um, so when we look at our cost, the denominator must also be our total or the original amount. It's what it was before applying any kind of discount to it. So we need to be consistent. The total amount of our percentage has to represent the total amount of our cost. So underneath here, I'm going to write X because we didn't know what the original total amount was. And then in our percentages or the cost, it's what we're actually paying or what we have or what percentage of it we're doing. So since this is a decrease because it's a discount, I'm going to subtract that 25% out of 100. So that means we have 75 out of 100 and we're paying 300. That's after applying the, the discount. So you see here, we're keeping our like parts consistent. Uh, our total amount or the original amount the X we don't know is 100% of our percentage. And then if it's a, a discount or a decrease, then it's going to go in our numerator as less than 100. But if it's like taxes, maybe it's going to be 110 over 100. But it's representing our amount after we applied our percentage. And that's the same thing with our cost here. That's why it's 300 because that, that's after the discount. And as we talked about, we can then cross multiply. So we do our one numerator multiply with the other denominator and the other numerator with the other denominator. So it's 75 times X is then equal to 300 times 100. And 75 times X is 75 X and 300 times 100 is 30,000. And when we divide each side by 75, X is then equal to 400. So you see, no matter which method I choose, we're gonna get the same answer. Uh, this is a method that we're going to use going forward. Um, and there's other ways you can solve. And if you've learned those already, you can continue to use those. Uh, but I do think that this one is a little bit easier in setting up because it allows for us to create a plan uh, and allows for us to make sure that we're being consistent. All right. So that's it for this video.